I want to share one of my favorite quotes with you. The person doing the most talking about the content is growing the most brain cells, end of quote. And this is by Marsha L. Tate. Now, if we recognize that learning is social and that the brain is a social organism, doesn't it make sense that students should be allowed to socialize in class to learn? Well, of course it does. It makes good sense. Think about it. If children are not allowed to respond with a fellow classmate or back uh, to the teacher quarrelly, how will you know that they are learning the material? Research tells us that the child who is doing the most talking is growing the most dendrites. That is to say, brain cells. Welcome to episode 133 of the Teacher Rockstar podcast, a place where tips and strategies critical to the new teacher are discussed. We share the latest educational research and best practices so that the new teacher can be better equipped for a successful classroom experience. I'm your host, Steve Hiles, and today we're going to be talking about Let Students Talk. But before we get into today's topic, I want to ask you a question. Are you a brand new teacher that just graduated college? Would you be interested in having somebody with you every step of the way to guide and assist you as you transition into the classroom? Well, if so, stay to the end of this episode and I will provide you with a link to learn how to do just that. Now, if you'd like to listen to us on YouTube, uh, simply go to the search bar and type in at Teacher Rockstar and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Okay, um, let's dive right in. I want you to think back to your own experience uh, in a boring teacher workshop whereby you had to listen to somebody for a full day. Okay, I think we may have all been there. Okay, I mean, do you feel motivated to learn the information that's presented? Well, that's the same for our students who sit in uncomfortable metal or wooden chairs for an hour without any movement or socialization. They get bored to death, which leads to off-task behavior and behavioral problems. In classrooms where they are truly brain-compatible, students don't have time to be bored because why? One of the things that engages their brains is excessive talking. Now, in a good way, okay? I don't mean a, a disruptive classroom now, not by any means. In fact, students should be talking at least twice as much as the teacher. Now, I know some teachers might wince at the idea of too much talking in a classroom, okay? I know for me personally, when I first started teaching, I surely didn't like a, a noisy classroom. Okay, but I've learned to accept as I taught longer that uh, there is a such thing as good noise. Okay, now, but if the talking is constructive, that is a good thing. And I've always said there is good noise and bad noise. Students sharing what they have learned is good noise. Now, I want to point out an interesting fact. Did you know that the brain learns 90% of what it teaches to another person. Now, what a powerful statistic that is. So when you are sure that students know what they are talking about, uh, have them talk to a partner to share what they have learned. Use the brains of other students to help you, the teacher, teach the content. This strategy will pay off in big dividends in the long run. Having students talk about new information with their peers is one of the most powerful ways for them to process new information. Now, something else that I wanted to point out is that after teaching a chunk of content, it's always best to stop and ask questions to the class to know whether or not they understood the information and retain the information that was just taught. You might even want the students to stand up, which sends, by the way, more oxygen and blood to the brain while they are answering specific questions and reviewing content. Now, a moment ago, I addressed excessive talking. Now, that doesn't mean an out-of-control classroom. Like I said before, it doesn't mean a disruptive class. I mean, let's face it, you can't really teach effectively in chaos. When you need your students' attention, you need it in a moment's notice. And you shouldn't have to scream or yell to get their attention, okay? I have to be honest with you. You know, doing so would really embarrass me. It really would. And I feel it erodes one's authority. So please, don't yell or scream at your students. It's just not cool. Have a prearranged signal in a place, which you obviously 
hopefully have taught on the first day of school. It could be a raised hand. It could be a bell. Uh, it could be a piece of music, lowering your own voice, etc., to get their attention. Another good idea would be to change up your attention-getting signals through the year as to not get your students' brains tired of the same old, same old. Okay? A key point here is to practice the quiet signal over and over again until it becomes second nature to your students. Let's discuss some ways in which your students can discuss content with their peers. Well, one way would be to select close partners. In other words, have students simply turn and talk to their neighbor to reteach information just taught. Brainstorm ideas or review content prior to a test. Uh, incidentally, you could have them stand up by their chairs to do this. Okay. Another way is to form cooperative groups of about three to five students and assign them a task to complete related to the content just taught. Students could be given specific questions to address or could discuss what they know about a given topic. The teacher could engage the entire class in brainstorming or discussing ideas related to a selected topic. And you'll want to be sure to address higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and of course evaluation. Now this one was one of my favorite things to do with my students which was to have my students write up their own questions and present them to their peers regarding subject content or a particular reading selection. Okay, It seems that students are much more motivated when answering their own questions as opposed to those provided by the teacher or the textbook. Okay, Now in conclusion I want to say that when Kids are afforded the opportunity to talk in the classroom. It definitely paves the way for less boredom and increases the likelihood that new material will be processed and embedded in long-term memory. Rather than the teacher striving for complete silence, teachers should build in collaborative talk time for their students. Final note here, allowing students to talk in class should not be mistaken for a disruptive or an out-of-control classroom. I want to be very clear about that. Establish a quiet signal which should be rehearsed to get your students' attention. Remember at the beginning of the show, I said if you'd be interested in having somebody with you every step of the way to guide and assist you as you transition into the classroom, and that I'd provide you with a link to learn more. Well, here it is. Go to tra.teacherclassroomresources.com. That's tra.teacherclassroomresources.com. Thank you for listening to the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Hiles. Should you have a topic that you would like me to address on the show, shoot me an email. I personally read every single email that comes in. I'd love to hear from you. When you get a moment, please visit our website and subscribe to my newsletter for the latest educational research, best practices, and unadvertised free bonuses. Simply go to teacherclassroomresources.com. And don't forget to subscribe to us at the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. And if you'd like to support us, please feel free to share our podcast with others. Post about it on social media. And if you feel comfortable doing so, leave a rating and review. That would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again. We'll see you same time, same place next week. And remember, my friend, you got this.